hey, we have on the board the integral of 1 over x squared x minus 144 dx. So I created this table as just a general guideline for which trig substitution you'd probably like to try to use in each case based on your integral. This doesn't mean that the trig substitution will always work or it'll be easy, it's just this is kind of a guideline of what you usually want to try. So for example, when our integral has x squared plus a squared, um, be like something like x squared plus one is perfect or x squared plus four, then we want to substitute, we probably want to try tangent. And the reason we do that, if we substitute tangent in for x here, we end up with tan squared plus one or something like tan squared plus one, so then we can use secant squared. If we have something that looks like a squared minus x squared, like it could be like nine minus x squared, then we could substitute in sine for x. And then we would have something that looks like this. We'd have something in the form, after we do some factoring, right, because we won't necessarily have a one here, we'll have something like one minus sine squared, and then we can use cosine squared. And then this last case looks a lot like the integral we have. That's kind of why I did this. So 144 can be written as 12 squared. So we already have this in our form x squared minus a squared. And so what we're gonna to wanna to try is we're gonna try what we're gonna to wanna to try to sub substitute uh, x with secant of some other variable, right? I should say that that's just gonna be some theta or t or whatever. And then when we do that substitution, the reason we're doing that is we can use this identity secant squared minus one, but notice that's tan squared. And when we put tan squared in here, we're inside a square root, and so it's going to simplify. So in each case, you notice we're kind of simplifying towards a square. And particularly if you have a, like a radical, it's going to simplify nicely. So now using this last line, we'll do this problem. So I mentioned I want to use for x, I want to substitute with secant. Now the only thing though is I don't want to just do secant because then you notice if I end up with secant squared minus 144, I can't use my identity. I want secant squared minus one. Now you could factor out, you could factor and mess with the 144, but I want to do it another way. And I actually want to, fact, I want to set x equal to 12 secant t. Then let's just get the derivative of that while we have this here. So dx is going to be 12 secant t tan t dt. So now that we have both these values, we can go back, plug it into the integral. So I'm going to write the dx value first in the numerator. So we're going to have 12, just kind of moving this over here, 12 secant t tan t dt. Then for this x, we'll just substitute in 12 secant t square root. Okay, so then our value of x. So when we square this, this is going to be 144 secant t minus 144. And so now you see why I have this 12 here, right? So now we have, we're set up nice for this to factor. And so what I'll do is, let's, let's actually do this kind of a long way. So let's rewrite just the square root. We'll factor out the 144 as secant, oh sorry, this is a secant squared here. Um, secant squared t minus one when we factor out the 144, but 140, 144 is just um, 12 squared. So we can rewrite this whole thing as 12 secant squared minus one. But now we have that identity that we mentioned on the previous board because this is just tan squared of t. So then we have rewriting again, we'll have t square root of tan squared t, but tan squared in the radical is just tan, so this whole thing is gonna be 12 tan t. So then rewriting with what we just found, we'll keep our numerator the same. We'll keep this piece the same, 12 secant t, but we found this to be 12 tan t. And then the beauty of that is, the secants cancel, the tans cancel, one of the 12s cancel, but we still have this one. So we're left with a lot of simplification, right? We have one 12th 
dt. So that means we're just integrating one. So when we integrate that, we're just gonna have one twelfth t plus c. We're almost done, but we want this in terms of x, not t. So let's go back to this equation right here. Let's just bring it down here and manipulate it a little bit. So we'll divide both sides by 12. So we'll have x over 12 equals secant t. And then I can just take secant inverse on both sides. And so we're left with t equals secant inverse of x over 12. Then to finish this off, all we need to do is take this and put it back there, substitute back. So we're left with our final answer, 1 12th secant inverse x over 12 plus c. And we're done. Got this problem from my quiz, integrals with roots. I'll provide a link in the description. Thanks for watching.